zoom in to the, to the mission area, we can see the 3D models come out really nicely and we can do a little manual flyover of the stockpile area. So you can see here it's come out really good. We've got really good definition of the stockpiles itself and even quite good detail on the model itself. In this video, we're going to do a full end-to-end -end walkthrough showing you how we use hammer missions to plan, capture, process and measure stockpile volumes. Let's get into it. Okay, so before we head out to site, we need to plan up the missions in Hammer Missions Hub. So if we open a browser, navigate to hub.hammermissions.com, you may be prompted to log in and then navigate to the mission planning section. You can create a subfolder to store your missions logically, which is what I've done here. And you're then going to uh, click new file and give it a name. And uh, yes, we want to open it so we can get on with our planning. So when you first get into the mission, there won't be any flights planned on screen and you can either navigate to the area of interest uh, or we can just load in the KML, which will take us there automatically. So we're going to use a KML file, which has been drawn up and exported from Google Earth Pro. So we click the plus icon in the top right corner, select import KML navigate to our KML file and click open. We'll then select this as a map emission and you'll then see our area of interest uh, on screen with the boundary that's been imported from the KML. So today we're doing a uh, map emission uh, and we're going to be doing a Nadir flight but Hammer Missions is very flexible and has multiple uh, flight missions including the bleak missions, inspections uh, and is built to do other use cases as well. So now we need to set the flight parameters. So if we click on the cog icon and on this mission we're going to be using an M300 with a P1 camera. If we scroll down and find this in our list, send me P1 and we're using the default lens which is 35 millimeters. So now we need to set the altitude. Um, now this is going to relate to the GSD that you require. So ground sampling distance is really important to achieve accurate measurements. Now this may dictate, be dictated by your client or it may be dictated by the actual uh, type of data that you uh, and accuracy that you want to achieve. So today we're going to be aiming for a GSD of 1.5, which with the 35mm lens means we'll be flying at an altitude uh, max altitude of 120. So if we type that in, you can see that Hammer Missions actually tells us what GSD we will achieve at this height with this sensor. So that's all good. There's no uh, ground offset here because we're actually measuring the ground surface. Um, the front overlap is fine and the side overlap we can set to 70%. The flight direction is automatically set by hammer to the longest edge, but if you want to, you can adjust this. Gimbal tilt will be at 90 degrees because we want the deer images and flight speed will leave at seven meters a second. Although hammer will uh, calculate the optimal flight speed for your sensor at the chosen height. And this is uh, important so that we uh, reduce motion blur to ensure we get sharp images and from those sharp images, we will get good data. If we fly too fast, we may not get sharp images. We may introduce some blur. Uh, this all depends on the shutter speed, the flight speed, and that's dictated by the lighting conditions once we get on site. So if we click done, we can now run a quick simulation um, to see how this flight will look when we get on site. So this all looks okay and we can see in the top corner that um, this mission is going to take approximately 23 minutes and take approximately 383 pictures. Um, so now it's all left to do is to sync this down to the controller. The mission is automatically saved 
So we'll now, now head over to the smart controller and sync this mission down so we can do any final tweaking on site and get on with the mission. Obviously, we're already connected here to a uh, Wi Fi network. Then we're going to click the folder in the top right and we're going to sync. Click the down arrow with the clouds to sync the missions down to the controller. And what this will do, will pull down any missions from Hammer Hub that aren't already on the controller. If they're already on the controller, you can select that individual mission and force it to override, just in case you've made any local changes. So there we are, file thing complete. And here's our stockpiles mission. If we now open it up, it should take us to the mission location and allow us to see the flight path and it should look exactly as we saw in the hammer hub now what you want to do is just give the uh, map a few seconds to load in and what it is doing is caching the map in the background so that when we get on site it will already be there and we can get a good idea of our bearings so now we can check settings but we're going to do this on site anyway and uh, and that's it we can now turn off the controller pack up our kit and head out to site Okay, so we're on site, we've set up the drone, we've got everything connected and we've synced the mission down to the Hammer Missions app. We're now going to get the drone in the air, make sure that the camera settings are good and then we're going to fly a short mapping mission of the stockpiles area to collect highly accurate data that we can then process back in Hammer Hub in order to get the volume of these stockpiles. So let's fly! Okay, so we're back in the office, having flown the mission on site, and we've copied the data from the SD card from the P1 or from whichever drone you're using to our file system on our PC. So the next step now is to process the data in HammerHub. So what we'll do is we'll open up HammerHub here, hub.hammermissions.com, and head over to the data analysis section. We're then going to create a new project. So we'll call it stockpiles. There isn't a specific mission for stockpiles or construction, so we're just going to select other. I'm going to associate this with our stockpiles mission that we planned earlier. Now this is optional. Click continue. Okay, now we're going to upload the images directly from, um, from the drone. So we've already copied those to our PC. So you navigate to your folder where the images are stored. Select them all with Control and A and click open. So you can see we've got 367 files. And the system's now gonna prepare those ready for upload. Okay, images are prepared. Click continue and create the project. At this point, the images are now going to be uploaded. This will take a varying amount of time depending on your internet connection, the number of images, the size of the files themselves. So we'll come back shortly once these Im images have uploaded and then show you how to process them into a 3D model. So see you shortly. Okay, so the upload is finished. Uh, once it's complete, you'll be met with this screen. So you can see the project information, the total number of images upload, and the total size of those images. The associated mission file, which is stockpiles. So we're now gonna open the project. Once the project opens, we can see all the images on the map, which should correspond to the flight path that we had originally planned. We can see the thumbnails down below. So what I want to do now is process this into a 3D model from which we can uh, estimate our volumes. So if we go up to the process button here, 3D model and process.
Okay, the 3D model requests have been submitted. So now what we can do is uh, get on with other things while Hammerhub does its thing. And we should get an email uh, once the process is completed. You can sit and wait with this on screen, but uh, there's no need. If you need to cl cl close your browser, then you can do. So let's wait for Hammerhub to process our data. And when we get back, we should have a 3D model waiting for us. See you in a sec. Okay, so shortly after requesting your 3D model to be processed, you should get a series of emails. Uh, once the model hits the queue on Hammer servers, it will then be picked up for processing. This may take a few minutes depending on, um, on how busy the servers are. And eventually you'll get an email like this one saying your 3D model has begun processing. Now you can close the browser and go away, have a brew, do whatever you like. And eventually you'll receive a further email saying that your 3D model is ready. So you can click the link to view your 3D model. That will take you straight back into Hammerhub and we can see the model uh, and see what it looks like. So here we are. Um, over on the left we have the 3D model of the site. We can see the yellow dots which is each of the images collected. Down below we've got all the thumbnails that have been used to make up the model. And on the right is the selected thumbnail and we can zoom in and see the detail. So you can see here even though we're flying at 120 meters, using the P1 we are getting a really good uh, level of detail here. So. Um, that has led to a good model. So the first thing we can do is if we click on the images icon, we can see which images were captured versus aligned. And it looks like uh, most of them have, uh, have aligned nicely, which is good. And then we can toggle those off so that uh, they don't get in our way. And now if we zoom in to the, to the mission area, we can see the 3D models come out really nicely. And we can do a little manual flyover of the stockpile area. So you can see here it's come out really good. We've got really good definition of the stockpiles itself and even quite good detail on the model itself. So the next thing to do is to select one of these stockpiles. Uh, in this case, we'd be doing all of them normally for the client, but just for purposes of demo, we're going to select the stockpile and uh, calculate its volume. So first we'll go up to this shaded box, which is, sorry, this cube, which is uh, measure volumes. And we'll then have to click around the boundary, uh, the base of the stockpile in order to tell Hammerhub which, uh, which um, area we want to measure. So what we would do is we would draw, we'd use the mouse left click and we'd draw a series of data points around the base of the stockpile being as accurate as possible. And basically what we're doing here is mimicking the uh, what a traditional surveyor would do on the ground with their GNSS rover. They do a series of data points around the base, they take a series of data points from the stockpile itself and then average that out to uh, get a volume. Now in our case, we, uh, we have a highly detailed model, so there won't be so much averaging going on. However, um, once we've selected the boundary, we click this tick and Hammer will start calculating the volume. Now, depending on the size of the volume, this may take a few minutes. So we'll just give this um, a little while to process and eventually we'll get our calculation. Okay, so you can see we have a total volume and we have a cut and a fill. Now, the cut is basically everything above the surface, so the ground. The fill is to fill in any gaps below the surface. So as we've uh, clicked our points around the base, it looks like the elevation is slightly changing, which is why we've got a bit of a fill. So in this case, our volume of our stockpile is going to be 352.4 meters cubed. Okay, now what we can do is if we um, if we click on uh, on the stockpile, we can copy that data to clipboard and then paste it into Notepad, Excel, a report, or whatever we like to do. 
So let's just do that once more. Let's select this stockpile here. Select measure. Draw our boundary. Being accurate as possible, trying to keep on the surface and not not um, get onto the stockpile itself. And once we're finished, we'll click the tick, calculate the volume. Okay, so there you can see we've got 248.71 meters cubed. And if we click that, that copies to the clipboard. Now, one important note before you actually start measuring stockpiles, if we go over to the uh, wrench icon over on the toolbar on the right hand side, we can see that we have... Um, two uh, methods of calculation and you click this link and it takes you to uh, a hammer knowledge base to learn more but basically um, lowest point mode is for stockpiles that might be on an uneven surface a slope or the stockpile might be butted up against something else such as a wall or a uh, a uh, container if like in our example where we're on fairly flat open ground and there's nothing around the stockpile we can use the best fit mode which basically calculates the volume of the stockpile from the base plane so be sure to select the correct one uh, to get the most accurate measurement and obviously if you weren't aware of this you can always delete the stockpile select the method and uh, and recalculate Okay, finally, what we can do is download the whole model in either OBJ or XYZ format so we can integrate with third party tools. And all we'll do here is we'll click the cloud icon to download the model, select our output format, and click download. And then you should see uh, our download progresses, and we can then use that uh, in third party tools as required. So just to summarize, uh, that was an end-to-end -end workflow of how to measure stockpiles using Hummer missions. Any questions, use the comments below and we'll see you in the next video. Thanks.